two million dollars to first place in best ball mania on underdog this year it's my first best ball mania draft and it's right after the nfl draft let's take a big old crack at it so the draft starts in one minute i am the second pick we got a bunch of people from the discord in here and i'm going to be using the fantasy rankings by the way they're free down below in discord if you want to use them i'm not charging for the draft guide this year it's free rankings and tiers and it'll all be coming out so with this second pick i'm basically guaranteed whatever i want here i can go ahead and guarantee myself cooper cup or jefferson i can guarantee myself mccaffrey or taylor probably going to guarantee a running back with the first pick and then just go with a bunch of wide receivers after that let's see what happens excited to see where the rookies go my ultimate goal would be to get christian mccaffrey with my first pick i'm hoping that j mac who drafts first believe from the discord hoping that he takes jonathan taylor with the first pick so j mac goes jonathan taylor i'm not even going to hesitate there's a thought to take cooper cup here but i'm just going to go to christian mccaffrey uh christian mccaffrey ends up getting icky aquanu in the first round one of the best if not the best offensive uh, run blocking tackle in the class so mccaffrey that upgrades for him no running back uh, depth there that's really going to concern me should continue to get all the check downs whether it's Matt Corral the third round rookie pick or Sam Darnold so we go to McCaffrey and then a run on wide receivers as they should start to go so my top two receivers go my top two running backs go in the first four picks and that is exactly what you would expect to see as even more wide receivers Jamar Chase goes third he's my wide receiver four I have Stefan Diggs ahead of him nothing crazy no major difference there but my hope is that some people start to take some of these running backs like an Austin Eckler going right there my running back three in the rankings because I personally and selfishly want to snap at least one and i have two quick picks so probably two wide receivers on the next turnaround lamb goes as the fourth wide receiver ahead of Diggs, ahead of adams i don't hate that he's my wide receiver six he's gonna get a lot more slot usage now with probably a jalen Tur tolbert on the outside battling james washington the new addition there the other outside gallop when he's actually healthy we're finishing up the first round here there's gonna be back-to-back -back picks by ty he's a fellow in the discord shout out ty and if i'm ty here i'm probably either hitting double wide receiver with definitely stefan Diggs, and then a running back in mixon there you go there's mixon if he takes Stefan Diggs here, that's a pretty good move. Stefan Diggs for me is the wide receiver three. Stefan Diggs for me is an overall like top five, borderline top five player in the draft. And he's already slid to the second round. Let's see what Ty does. Smart man, Ty. He takes Stefan Diggs. Look, they didn't add really any threats at wide receiver. Six round wide receiver. So definitely a win for all the wide receivers. Gabe Davis, Jameson Crowder in the slot. And yeah, Stefan Diggs, who had a ton of usage last year. So we're three picks away from my pick right now, and I want a wide receiver. My best available is Mike Evans, T. Higgins, DJ Moore, Mike Williams. I like Mike Williams a lot, by the way. Best available running backs are Swift and Leonard Fournette. I am now one pick away. T. Higgins goes, Swift goes. So Leonard Fournette's still on the board. He's a very solid pick. T. Higgins goes. I'm interested in Mike Evans. He goes. You son of a gun, Tanner Tolbert. Why does that name sound familiar? Tanner Tolbert takes Mike Evans from me. He would have been obviously great with no Goblin being there. So Leonard Fournette's there. He's looking good. Now, let's see what we have going on. We have DJ Moore, Mike Williams. I might take Mike Williams. This early, though, seems a little bit too early. Uh, DJ Moore is there. Keenan Allen, Michael Thomas. I'm going to take DJ Moore, which is scary because now I'm building like a, a lot into this Panthers offense here. Um, I don't really want to stack this Panthers offense, but we might have to get a backdoor stack on Sam Darnold later. So I'm on the clock now, and these are my wide receivers that are left. Leonard Fournette stands out as a good value at this point, but do I want another running back? Not really. Mike Williams is here. Keenan Allen, Michael Thomas, Amari Cooper. These are a lot of guys that I'm higher on that the field is not. A lot of these guys go in the 20th picks. So maybe I can get away with taking a Leonard Fournette right now. So let's go ahead and snag Lenny Fournette. Now, typically I wouldn't do that. I have Leonard Fournette and I have Christian McCaffrey. So I'm set now, in my opinion, two borderline top five running backs. I'm set at running back. The reason I don't go wide receiver there is look what was left. Like I personally like a lot of these wide receivers, Mike Williams, uh, Michael Thomas, Amari Cooper. Those three wide receivers for me are top 15 wide receivers, but they don't go into like wide receiver 20 to wide receiver 25. I'm um, fingers crossed can get at least one of them at the next pick when I know Leonard Fournette would not have been there there's no doubt in my mind that as the season goes on people are going to realize oh the biggest threat for Amari Cooper right now is David Bell yeah I like that oh the biggest threat for Mike Williams right now is Keenan Allen who is aging and Mike Williams just got a big deal with Justin Herbert oh yeah I like that a beautiful sight to see as a bunch of running backs just went in a row Javante Saquon and Aaron Jones which were 15 picks away but that's good for the wide receiver depth Jalen Waddle goes who I'm very low on my wide receiver 21 I'm honestly just not a big believer in Tua and Tyree Kill is there now and they have Mike Isecki uh, and they signed Cedric Wilson and they have Chase Edmonds out of the backfield for check. Right? It's just a lot of guys there for Jalen Waddle who didn't see much downfield usage, although he can, but do we trust Tua to get him the ball? An interesting name in Antonio Gibson goes, and to me, that's honestly, the beginning of the fourth round is not terrible, but I don't love it. They have JD McKissick, they re-signed, they stole him back from Buffalo. That's not going to help his passing game work. They dropped
drafted Brian Robinson in the third round, which to me means short down usage is not secure for Gibson, who's dealt with injuries. And the red zone role now is not as secure. So I'm a little bit concerned there for an offense that we don't feel that confident in getting in the red zone left and right. So we're three picks away from my pick, and this is what's left. Mike Williams, unfortunately, just went. But I'm looking pretty decent here, like Michael Thomas and Amari Cooper. The goal is to walk away with one of those guys. If we walk away with both, that's great. And then there's still some solid options in McLaurin and Allen Robinson. So let's see what happens here as we're three picks away. So after a few running backs go, I now have the luxury, in my opinion, of choosing on which wide receiver that I want here. So I can choose Michael Thomas or Amari Cooper. The fact that we see Amari Cooper next in the ADP, I'm just going to take him so that J Mac can't snipe me on him. I think Amari Cooper is a great pick. Either he's going to have Baker Mayfield, depending on what happens there, or he's going to have a lot of Deshaun Watson, depending on what happens with the news there. I also think that Michael Thomas is a solid pick because, in my opinion, more secure quarterback situation with Jameis. They had a top two last year top two efficient passing offense we'll see if that can continue so jay mac goes mclaurin with his first pick he now has one wide receiver two running backs and a quarterback he's probably going to go receiver again please do not take michael thomas because if you don't the dj Moore, amari cooper michael thomas feels really good i've already been sniped on mike evans come on jay mac help me out here he goes david montgomery and we celebrate as we get michael thomas in the fifth round maybe it's just me but i love michael thomas and i love the way this team is shaping up we have christian mccaffrey and leonard fournette potentially the two leaders the two guys to lead the league in running back reception this year that feels good dj moore amari cooper and michael thomas is my three receivers and now i have opportunities to stack maybe you take a shot on deshaun watson you have Jameis winston as a late stacking option the carolina guys you obviously don't have to spend any draft capital on those quarterbacks to stack with them so that feels really really good as i'm 18 picks away this is where the draft stands uh, my best available running backs the only top 20 running back i have less is josh jacobs but i do like Brees hall elijah mitchell and travis Etienne. that's kind of a tear break for me uh, wide receivers alan robinson's still there we just saw chris goblin go even though he's hurt we saw hollywood brown go pretty dang early i think the best wide receivers left right now that i'm looking at on this screen are Allen Robinson, Darnell Mooney, Bateman, and Brandon Cooks, which maybe after I say that means I should probably move up Brandon Cooks ahead of Jerry Judy and even maybe ahead of like a Cortland Sutton. Only four quarterbacks have gone. The main tight ends have gone outside of like Hawkinson and Goddard. Uh, Gronk I have ranked even though maybe he'll retire but that's where we're at right now let's see as I'm 16 picks away the next goal is keep loading up on wide receivers maybe start to look at quarterback as we go on here I know for a fact that my man Ty is using the rankings in the discord because he just went Brandon Cooks and Darno Mooney which I think are amazing fifth and sixth round wide receiver picks both the clear wide receiver ones on their team both can push for top 10 target shares in the league this year so yeah I think those are great picks they were my guys that I had queued up it's tough when you're drafting against the discord really tough if you want the free rankings that are going to be updated you can check them out down below we are this year you don't got to pay for the draft guide i said screw it you're just going to get them for free all you got to do is join the discord interact in the community you can get those rankings so there you go josh jacobs goes midway through the sixth round and if i'm being honest look they drafted a fourth round zamir white i think that's more of a concern for backup Kenyon drake if i'm being honest mid through the sixth round mid six if he's like the the death zone running back this year i don't think it's that much of a death zone josh jacobs is a really good back he's a really good back like flirting with 1200 plus total yards each year that he's been in the league and now he has an offense with Devontae Adams that's going to get down the field more, be more efficient, get in the red zone more. He started to see receptions last year. A career high by far yeah i like that sixth round for josh jacobs for eagles solid pick i am now two picks away i'm now one pick away and i'm looking at my board and i'm like i don't know the wide receivers kind of um, gelled out really quick here the quarterbacks aren't looking too great if i'm looking at this overall it's, it's got to be wide receiver in my opinion still at this point the running backs have all faded out i wanted a bateman or hopkins and they both just went right before me so the way i have it ranked is juju is my top guy left then garrett wilson Traylon burks gabriel davis drake london i mean all these dudes are fine but they seem to be like a tier below where I want to be picking right here and Juju goes so do I want to go rookie wide receiver at the end of the sixth and Garrett Wilson he's the main guy I'm looking at right now taking a risk on Deshaun Watson seems early Russell Wilson seems a little bit early for his talents uh let's see what we I mean yeah I think that Hawkinson versus Goddard I think that my best bet definitely not any of these running backs it's either going to be a rookie wide receiver in Traylon Burks or Garrett Wilson let's go with Garrett Wilson here if we can get the pick in time and we do at the buzzer Garrett Wilson so we take another wide receiver who is arguably the best wide receiver in this class profiles out comp to like Steph Diggs not elite anywhere but can get really elite with route running solid all around to me Garrett Wilson is immediately the wide receiver one for this team ahead of Elijah Moore who's coming off of injury ahead of Corey Davis for sure who's totally different receiver as an outside clasher definitely ahead of Denzel Mims 
So now I'm on the clock again. I now have four receivers and two running backs. And at this point, I still don't want to. I still want to just go receiver. I honestly just want to keep loading up on receivers. Maybe we go to Amon Ross St. Brown. Maybe we go to Traylon Burks. There's nobody out there. I think my goal is either Traylon Burks here or Drake London. Amon Ross St. Brown goes. I'm lower on him. So now I have another cho a choice here. Which are these rookie wide receivers do I want, right? So this is where my wide receiver rankings are right now. It's Traylon Burks, Drake London. Those are my main guys left. Uh, we can take Amon Ross off. Do I want Traylon Burks? to fill in for that AJ Brown role or do I want Drake London and I'm gonna go with the seventh round pick of Traylon Burks I mean first round pick in real life my seventh round pick the reason I go Traylon Burks there I get back-to-back -back rookies maybe the two best rookies in this class is because he has the better quarterback in my opinion the more secure quarterback for this specific year in a Ryan Tannehill there's no AJ Brown so if they're gonna go run heavy play action it's gonna be to a big dude who has some speed and physicality and skills after the catch and Traylon Burks rather than an older receiver in Robert Woods and then after that there's nobody else on the depth chart right now it's like Nick I think Nick Westbrook and Racy McMath, Des Fitzpatrick, like those dudes aren't going to be doing much. It's Traylon Burks and Garrett Wilson, sixth and seventh picks on rookie wide receivers with a lot of upside who are wide receiver ones for their team right away. I like that. We're now at five receivers and two running backs starting to get to a point where I want to look at quarterback. So the only problem I see with the way that I'm building right now is that, I mean, I could get Jameis for stacking reasons. I can get Tannehill. I can get Zach Wilson. I can get who knows who the quarterback's going to be in Cleveland. I can get Sam Darnold. All these quarterbacks stink, right? I mean, if I I knew I can get the Sean Watson. I would have pulled the trigger on him already. But all these quarterbacks absolutely stink. So that's the one concern. Maybe I go with like a naked quarterback round of Trey Lance and then take a risk later on on like a Zach Wilson. Maybe I could add a, a Jameis. Maybe I just go, I probably just go three quarterbacks here. Try and piece, piece that thing together. We are now six picks away and this is what the board is looking like. Quarterbacks wise, if you want to take the risk on the Sean Watson, he's there. Trey Lance, Cousins, Fields, Rodgers, uh, tight end. Some decent ones left in Zach Ertz, Dalton Schultz, Goddard, uh, Gronk if he returns. There's a good amount of running backs left at this point. Like Chase Simmons is a solid pick in my opinion at running back probably the best one left him and Gordon and then wide receiver there's always going to be a ton we're starting to get to like Christian Kirk might be the wide receiver one for Trevor Lawrence that looks good Russell Gage firmly the wide receiver too since they didn't draft anybody there uh, for Tampa Bay until Chris Goblin returns Sky Moore has a real chance yet again some more rookies here Sky Moore and Christian Watson real chances to be wide receiver ones for their team Kenny Galladay a lot of people hate him because he hasn't produced lately. They didn't really take a wide receiver that's going to threaten his role with Wandell Robinson. I think that if he's healthy, he has an outside clash role with now more time for Daniel Jones to throw downfield, adding in some offensive linemen, Evan Neal, right? So I think that's a decent spot. But yeah, rookie wide receiver is still dominating this range. Russell Gage is probably my priority if he doesn't get picked. Uh, there goes Hunter Renfro and there goes Dallas Goddard. So I think I'm going to go another wide receiver here, six receivers and two running backs. And then I really got to start looking at quarterback. And then maybe a lot of people are scared off from the Sean Watson. I have Amari Cooper, his main stacking option. Maybe I can just wait for Deshaun Watson in like round 14. Maybe we'll get lucky there. So I'm back on the clock now. The wide receivers look really good. I mean, Russell Gage is on here. He's probably my pick right now. He will drop to a wide receiver three, though, come best ball playoffs. Christian Kirk could be the wide receiver one out there. Chris Olave is interesting because now I could really stack Jameis, right? The Michael Thomas, Chris, uh, Chris Olave stack. That starts to become really appealing. Maybe I get him with my next pick. But right now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to snag Russell Gage, who I think is a solid pick. Like a, a late eighth, early ninth round pick on Russell Gage, who maybe for a month or more will be the number two passing option for Tom Brady. And then number three will definitely be involved moving forward. Honestly, Jamison Williams in the eighth round, just even in the late eighth round, just feels really early for a dude who's going to be a rookie. It's going to take him obviously um, maybe a month or two to get back from that ACL into the season. And then he's a rookie and has to learn the playbook. Seems pretty damn early to me. I'm back on the clock again here. Sky Moore is there. Uh, Christian Kirk is there. We know he's going to have opportunity to be a wide receiver one with the money he's making. But I'm going to go ahead and take Trey Lance. I I like these other receivers, but luckily for the way that I've been drafting, I already have six receivers, so I think it makes the most sense. Get a Trey Lance. We really can't stack him. His two main wide receivers are gone, but get a Trey Lance. His tight end is gone. You just run and make him. Hope that this guy can go out there and have 50 to 100 rushing yards a game in this offense. So I don't hate that. We can get the naked upside of Trey Lance. Naked just means not his naked body, people. No, no, YouTube, don't ban us. It just means not stacking him. Maybe you stack him with the rookie wide receiver they drafted. I think Devin Gray out there late. If not, I can just try and stack up. My goal is going to be to get a Jameis later on so Jameis later on is a goal and then watching where and if he's still on the board and no he is not Deshaun Watson just went so yeah a Jameis later on for a stack will be my goal so this is how the board is currently looking in terms of quarterbacks Justin Fields and Kirk Cousins my only top 15 still some solid tight ends left so I don't feel the need to rush and get a tight end I'd be completely fine even getting like a Gerald Everett or a Tyler Higby in a couple of rounds uh, running backs a couple of good ones left Melvin Gordon Chase Edmonds at this point in the draft approaching double digit rounds they don't draft a running back he's making two times more than anybody else in the roster biggest threat is a 30 year old Raheem Mostart not concerned with that and then the depth of wide receiver as I'm like a dozen picks away continues to be evident Christian Kirk might be the wide receiver one with Trevor Lawrence Michael Gallup is clearly going to be a wide receiver too with Dak Prescott slot usage Sky Moore might be
be the wide receiver one. Christian Kirk might be his team's wide receiver one. Jacoby Myers might be his wide receiver one. Kenny Galladay is his wide receiver one, right? So there's a lot of upside and talent here. You then get the Pittsburgh guys in Claypool and George Pickens. Who knows who's going to really take on that wide receiver tool role out of those guys in Pittsburgh. And then the further down you go, like Crowder is definitely going to have a, uh, maybe not a Cole Beasley role, but a solid role in the offense. Jahan Dotson, a top 15 pick, is going to come in right away and play the slot for the commanders and has outside wide receiver upside. Josh Palmer, he's going to be on three wide receiver sets. Jalen Guyton's a cut candidate. They didn't take a wide receiver in their draft. I mean, I for one am shocked that Christian Kirk is still on the board in the 10th round. I mean, if you go to Jacksonville Trevor Lawrence is fine right they end up uh, ensuring the offensive line a little bit out there and then you get Christian Kirk who's profiling out as the wide receiver one what's his competition Marvin Jones I actually like as a later on pick I'm not concerned with LaVisca Chenault I'm just not I'm not concerned with Jamal Agnew or Laquan Treadwell and I'm really not concerned with Zay Jones either Christian Kirk is the clear based on money and based on skill set he can play the slot he can play the outside he's the clear wide receiver one and there you go as I'm saying it thank you Kevin Luck for hearing me he goes with a 10-5 midway through the 10th round for a wide receiver one not in the worst situation we think Trevor Trevor Lawrence is good, right? Or at least decent. Yeah. So interesting to see that he waited or, or went that late. Chase Edmonds goes in the 10th round. There goes Rashad Penny. I need to make a decision now because I already have, I have six receivers, a quarterback and two running backs. There's no running backs on the board that look all that appealing to me. This is where my board currently is in terms of guys left. It's like backup running back city here with Rashad White, some rookies. Ramondre Stevenson's not terrible. I, honestly, I'm more interested in like the, the James Cook rookie satellite role, the JD McKissick satellite role for his team. Um, those would be the guys that I would look at the most, but there's still some wide receivers that I have more interest in, uh, mainly Christian Watson here is on the board. Jamison, Jameis Winston is also appealing, but I'm going to hope that he stays on the board uh, later on. So I'm on the clock now, and it's just going to be a pretty easy selection for me to go Christian Watson. Best available is on the board. He is the best available wide receiver for me, and he's also the best available wide receiver in the ADP, so we'll snag him so he doesn't go. And now I'm, I'm rookie wide receiver happy. I have three rookie wide receivers, all who profile out to be legit wide receiver ones for their team. And then I'm right back on the clock again. I already have seven wide receivers. Do I go for an eighth here and get Kenny Galladay, a wide receiver one on his team? in the what round are we in the 11th round let's do it so now i have eight wide receivers and since i pick up kenny galladay it opens up daniel jones stack options for me later on kenny galladay goes mvs goes some other good wide receivers left on the board right now if we can scroll to that on my page jacoby myers i chose kenny galladay over him maybe that's something i have to change myers in a more run first offense mike Gusecki went pretty damn early i mean i had mike Gusecki ranked all the way down here at tight ends i think 18th overall which a lot of people might be saying what do you mean look i mean tyree kill plays a slot really damn well Jalen Waddle plays a slot really damn well, right? They have these other guys now in the offense. I don't know how much two is going to sustain a bunch of 300-yard passing games. So, yeah, I'd much rather have Tyler Higby in his offense ahead of him. I'd much rather have Gerald Everett in a brand-new offense with the Chargers if you're going to go there. I think he's actually a better player, probably, in that offense than what Gusecki's going to be. And I love Gusecki as a Penn Stater. He's hell of an athletic tight end. But you have Albert O. You have Dalton Schultz. These guys probably higher in the pecking order, less competition, especially less elite competition like a Tyree Kill and potentially a Waddle. Same thing can be said for Pat Fryermuth, who just went. He has a bunch of receivers in the pecking order ahead of him including an elite running back and no secure quarterback play right now why is he going as like a top 10 tight end he's my tight end 20 i'm two picks away in round 12 and i think running back is the spot that i want to target now as i have two elite guys so maybe try and shoot for a an upside running back play i mean hell i already have eight receivers and damn it the guy i wanted damian pierce goes right before i could pull the trigger on him so now i think i'm going to go ahead and select jd mckissick here mckissick with an obvious role in that offense for chances when they're down to see five or six reception games so i'll end up taking that I wanted Damian Pierce who I think he's only dealing with Marlon Mack I don't know if Tanner has my uh, my sheet because he was my next available he's only dealing with Marlon Mack out there that's not much of a threat and then Rex Burkhead who's actually making more money than Marlon Mack Damian Pierce the fourth round pick seems to be the best running back on that roster let's get our first tight end and really then mainly our only tight end here I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select Tyler Higby here Tyler Higby obviously part of a really good offense Tyler Higby in the 13th round after he was going in the 8th to 10th round last year even though now it there's no Robert Woods out there there's no OBJ so I'm now 17 picks away and you can see the board is quickly clearing out i mean there's some top 15 tight ends left which i'll probably just snag one really late especially like an irv smith maybe quarterbacks left a lot of these guys i can stack i have a daniel jones stack with kenny galladay i have the michael thomas Jameis winston i think i'm gonna pull the trigger on Jameis next time around fingers crossed that he's there and then running backs i mean i have three right now i probably snag another one later on maybe it's a gus edwards um there's a lot of other running backs later on that could be appealing depending on their situation like a brian robinson isaiah spiller went really early he's not even in my top 50 yikes Has, uh, uh, this one's a really interesting one. Hassan Haskins. He's the 
a running back two out there if Derrick Henry gets hurt for a team that wants to run that seems really appealing and then we have wide receivers for days out here Robbie Anderson's a wide receiver two on his team right they have a bunch of other rookies that even David Bell could be a wide receiver too that could be a double stack or a skinny stack of Cleveland I'm four picks away now Jameis is going to be my pick here secure a second quarterback if not then Daniel Jones will be my pick and then after that I mean we're going to just be looking at best availables the two running backs that I wanted most start in Gus Edwards have now gone the goal is to get one or two more running backs there's a couple guys especially Haskins late is a guy that I'm going to be targeting there in Tennessee I don't think a lot of people will be choosing him and then tight ends are really clearing out as well I only have two top 25 tight ends left in Gerald Everett and Evan Ingram so there's a chance I just double tap here and go a uh, quarterback and Evan Ingram just went so now I kind of want to go Jameis and then Gerald Everett so I can double tap tight end I'm going to grab Gerald Everett because I can just snag a either Daniel Jones or a Jameis depending on who's left I'm done at tight end with those two I feel good about my tight ends I have some solid tight end play between Tyler Higby and Gerald Everett former teammates and now I'm feeling solid at quarterback where I could even triple stack this and get a third tight end at Adam Trotman if I want to later or another wide receiver at Marquez Callaway really late if I want to triple stack it but for right now the Jameis Winston as you can see in the bottom right hand corner Jameis Winston just added with a Trey Lance Winston to the the stack of Michael Thomas feels pretty good the naked Trey Lance so this is where we sit with best availables as we're in like round 15 now Tua Marcus Mariota Mitchell Trubisky not much left at quarterback uh tight ends honestly not much left maybe an upside play in a Brevin Jordan or an OJ Howard who's now in Buffalo uh you scroll down e even honestly Hayden Hurst is not a bad idea he's the new tight end in Cincy only one top 50 running back is left for me in Jamal Williams and then it's some rookies or some just straight backups uh Hassan Haskins and Naeem Himes probably my favorite guys left even Jarek McKinnon because of the team he's on in Kansas City that could be interesting one top 60 wide receiver left in Nico Collins my next pick is probably going to be trying to get like a Jameson Crowder and then plus a Naeem Himes or a Haskins Haskins might be there later on though because then we just have a bunch of later round receivers that we can throw some darts on a Zay Jones a Tolbert a Braxton Berrios in that offense and oh no we just saw Naeem Himes go which is no fun so now I need to uh, try and find another running back as I'm close I, I know that I like I know that I like the later round pick opportunity that we get in Haskins I'm gonna add Jamal Williams he's still gonna have a role in that offense if Swift was to get hurt again like he did last year Williams comes in and sees a pretty clear role for one to two weeks for you which is really all you're asking for from a, a running back in round 16 so eight wide receivers and three running backs two quarterbacks and two tight ends not sure I first draft here not sure I really love the format I'm going for in terms of how uh kind of balanced I am at this point outside of receiver I can see myself snagging some more receivers depending on who's left as Crowder goes that doesn't feel as great Brian Robinson a pretty solid pick that goes I think Jamal Williams will be my next pick if he's still on the clock I also like seeing Alec Pierce who's in Indy like it's really just Michael Pittman they don't have any tight ends out there and then it's Alec Pierce right they lost Zach Pascal so Alec Pierce an athletic guy on the outside for Matt Ryan that's also another guy that I'd be really interested in grabbing so maybe I go for a, a combo here of like an Alec Pierce as Crowder goes and, and, and Robbie Anderson just went and Alec Pierce and Nico Collins is still there these are guys that I like these are guys that I like Jamal Williams goes no the only running back that I had any interest in drafting at least with this next pick goes that feels bad so let's go with our fourth rookie wide receiver come on down Alec Pierce the wide receiver two maybe right away now in Indy with a solid quarterback there in Matt Ryan so I'm a pick away three seconds away and I have nine receivers do I really want to go 10th receiver here there's not much that stands out like quarterbacks I could wait on Sam Darnold uh running backs nothing really stands out I could just wait on Haskins I think that he's probably the best available wide receiver I might as well go Nate Nico Collins I mean Nico Collins they took John Mechie but he plays a different role Nico Collins is going to be on the outside they traded away three draft picks an NFL record for a third round receiver or day three receiver Nico Collins I believe last year third round pretty sure third round Davis Mills liked him towards the end of last year so I now have 10 receivers a bunch of young receivers on my roster including four rookies so I feel I feel pretty solid at receiver now with 10 there uh, I'm probably set I just need to snag like one or two more running backs and Haskins will be the guy there. Maybe a third quarterback in Sam Darnold and we start to feel good. As you can see in the bottom right hand corner of the screen, I feel good. There's Trey Lance, there's Jameis, McCaffrey, Fournette, McKissick. I'll just snag another running back, Haskins likely. And then a bunch of other guys down here. So I think Haskins is a clear guy that I have to maybe make a tweet about in terms of his ADP early on. He's going way too late. A couple more rounds to go. I'll do those on my own. But we finish up our first draft, the first one after the draft. And if you want to see even more information on how the NFL draft impacted every single team, you can check out this video right here.